welcome to the second lecture of module 4 in this lecture today we shall discuss about two popular processes for metal sheet based rd manufacturing and those are the ultrasonic consolidation and laminated manufacturing so ultrasonic consolidation on our classification chart utilizes the metal as a raw material of the sheet it uses the cutting method of milling it uses the bonding method of diffusion and the joining is selective not the entire space selective joining is there but that too is not really exactly on the path where we want to join but it join the part approximately selectively so like other sheet based rd manufacturing processes ultrasonic consolidation is also a hybrid process because here the additive and subtractive processes work simultaneously ultrasonic consolidation works on the fundamental of ultrasonic metal welding where the sequence of metal foils are joined together with in situ material removing process through a three axis cnc contour milling due to moderate pressure applied and the relatively low temperature experienced by a sample during manufacturing ultrasonic consolidation operates at a solid state process as i have already mentioned it works on the approach of bond and then form the ultrasonic consolidation was first invented and patented by solidica in 1999 then later on in 2011 solidica and addition welding institute started a company called fabrisonic and now they together are making the commercial machine for ultrasonic consolidation so this is the typical architecture of an ultrasonic machine we start with the power supply this is the conventional power supply which is having 50 hertz frequency this alternating current is transferred to the power supply where the frequency is increased up to a ultrasonic value that is 20 kilohertz then this alternating current is given to a transducer where this electrical energy is get converted into mechanical energy then this mechanical drives a booster which basically amplifies the amplitude given by the transducer and then it is connected with a sonotrode and then this sonotrode transfer the ultrasonic oscillation to a metal foil kept here on the workpiece so this is the metal foil and this is the workpiece now when this metal foil moves ultrasonically over this workpiece due to the energy transfer from the foil to workpiece the interface of the metal foil and the workpiece got joined together also usually a normal force is applied to make sure the bonding is efficient so basically as a whole we give our electrical energy to the process and convert it into mechanical energy here and then further this mechanical energy is utilized to join the aluminium foils with the workpiece this is the 3d picture of the same here you can see this is the welding speed meaning to say the whole thing is rotating and hence this solar rod is rotating and it is moving forward and that decides the welding speed then this red color is the transducer which is receiving of course the energy from the electrical power supply which is giving enhanced alternating current frequency to the transducer which actuates back and forth and attached with the booster which amplifies its amplitude and then give this mechanical energy to the sonotrode the sonotrode which then vibrates over the foils which got joined with the pre built layers or the previous foils there is a base plate on which we keep the first layers and as you see here in the blue color this is called as anvil the substrate basically typically like i already mentioned a welding force is applied from the top in the vertical direction as shown here so how it works in the ultrasonic consolidation process a thin metal foil of approximately 100 to 150 micrometer thick and around 25 mm wide is placed on a sacrificial base plate that is bolted on the anvil 
So, as you see here, assume that this is the anvil and this is the new metal foil, it is kept now on top of the anvil. Now, the foil is compressed due to the uh, vertical load applied on the sonot rod and this pressure is quite moderate. This sonot rod then vibrates with a frequency of approximately 20 kilohertz. Also, the peak to peak amplitude of this sonot rod from this end to this end is approximately 5 to 40 micron in the transverse direction if this is the travel direction. Also, this sonot rod used to have a very rough surface that is usually produced by the knurling operation. It is required to grip this aluminum foil properly so that the, there will be no slip between the sonot rod and the aluminum foil. The only relative motion will be between the aluminum foil and the anvil or the substrate. The process is performed at the room temperature and it produces heat through the, sub, uh, through the scrubbing of the mating surface at the bonding interface. The heat causes a temperature rise at the interface that is between 30 to 50 percent of the base metals melting point. So, look at this carefully. This is the interface and due to the scrubbing between the aluminum foil and the base plate or the pre-built layer, the temperature at this interface will increase and that will be approximately 30 to 50 percent of the base metals melting point. Typically, the ultrasonic consolidation process is conducted at an elevated temperature of up to 200 degrees centigrade. This temperature is increased by increasing the temperature of the base plate. Once one layer is bonded, the additional layers are added and appropriately the machine in between. As you see in this diagram, for example, in this region, what you are seeing here, material is not required, hence it is milled out. And then the next layer is coming and the sonot rod is moving over this next layer and vibrating appropriately to join this new sheet with the previous or the pre-built layers. Again, this unwanted region will be milled out and the process will repeat itself. So, this is the basic working cycle of ultrasonic consolidation. Now, the same thing you can see through this video as well. Here, you can see that this is the sonot rod. The sonot rod is moving on the strips of the metal. As the sonot rod moves forward, it also oscillates in the transverse direction with the frequency of around 20 kilohertz. The amplitude is around 5 to 40 micron and being a very small amount of the amplitude, you are not able to see that. After joining the strips on the desired region, a milling cutter is used to remove the unnecessary or the unwanted region. The joining is selective because it is only joining the material wherever it is required, not the entire sheet. And later on, the milling cutter removes the unwanted material and you can even see the chips are lying on the bottom side in the big form, not on the, uh, the strip itself are lying here you in the video. Here also you see only three strips are used because only in the selective reason the material is added. So, due to the selective utilization of the material while joining, we can save lot of time also. Unlike if you have seen the laminated object manufacturing where we used to join the whole sheet and then we need to do the grid cutting, that operation is eliminated here. Because here we are using small uh, strips, those are having width around 25 mm. So, this is a professional machine by Fabrisonic later on uh, developed and now they are able to produce the parts by utilizing the ultrasonic consolidation of very high complexity as well as with the variety of materials. Being a solid state joining process, the far most advantage of this process is able to join the parts of different material and also it is able to embed the electronics inside that. Further, the process is very similar what you have already seen.
they are able to print a variety of material in the process and of course after deposition of each or after joining of each strip the milling operation is appropriately performed like here in situ they are making drills and further they are feeding the appropriate embedding systems into the part the raw material is of course in the form of a strip as you are seeing in this video and the typical width of the strip is around 25 mm different options for the milling is also available because somewhere we need to make the small or tiny holes and somewhere we need to make the larger here they are doing the engraving on the deposited or the joint sheets and then finally the desired shape is given by the milling operation so in this video you have seen the copper and aluminium are getting joined by the process which is almost very difficult to join by any other uh, metal based processes which we discussed so far so how does it work so the fundamentals of ultrasonic consolidation the ultrasonic consolidation lies somewhere between the solid state diffusion and the friction linear friction welding operation as in the case of the linear friction uh, welding operation we use a very high relative motion between the two parts those are going to join as well as a high load is applied while in the case of the diffusion bonding very low amount of relative motion is provided between the two work piece to be joined together as well as very low amount of vertical load is applied between the two work piece to be joined together and in the case of solid state diffusion bonding there is almost no scrubbing of the two surface the diffusion bonding relies on elevated temperature that is up to 50 to 90 percent of the melting point of the base material also a high pressure is applied to flatten the bonding surface and the fragment and to fragment the impurities and produce atom to atom contact when the surface are pressurized together at high temperature the atom diffuse along the grain boundaries closing voids in the contacting surfaces the atom goes from here to here through the interface and close all the voids those you are seeing at the interface in the diffusion bonding the atom condense and further reduce the size of any void in the interface and the pressure can be applied for a few minute or up to a few hour depending on the material being bonded so in the case of solid state diffusion bonding approximately there is no scrubbing or the relative velocity between the work piece they just held together for a longer period of time while in the case of friction welding the bonding is solely depend on the pressure and frictional scrubbing at the interface the process begins with two work piece this is work piece one and this is work piece two that are statically clamped on this end and on this end both ends the next step depends on the process inertia welding or the linear welding in inertia welding the parts are rotated for example instead of having this type of part you have a rotary disc they are rotated together to provide the relative motion between them and in the case of linear welding the part goes undergoes through the reciprocating motion this reciprocating motion and the frequency is typically up to 10 hertz to 100 hertz also the pieces are brought together under very light pressure this load which you are applying is not as high as it was in the case of diffusion bonding finally a forging pressure is applied later on and the relative motion is stopped to form the final joining the stress on the material due to the scrubbing and forging cause the material to reach the plastic state which helps removing the surface impurities and after the plastic state has been reached the two surfaces are forced together while in the case of the ultrasonic bonding it uses the advantages of both it is somewhere in between the diffusion bonding and the friction or the linear friction welding ultrasonic consolidation share many aspect of both the joining processes it performs at an elevated temperature 
similar to the diffusion bonding like in diffusion bonding we used to have around 90 percent of the melting point here it is not 90 percent but it is at the elevated temperature that is for sure also there is an interfacial motion of the friction uh, is provided between the workpiece and the pre-built layer but the amplitude of the workpiece relative motion is not as high as in the case of friction welding it is there but not that high it is unique the process is unique in the ultrasonic waves travels through the bonding metal and lowers down the modulus and the stress needed to reach the plastic state even it has been found if the ultrasonic consolidation process is performed in the vacuum the diffusion or the bonding takes place with a very faster rate the mechanism of bond formation during the ultrasonic welding of metal has been widely studied out but exact working of the ultrasonic bond formation is not really fully understand by the theories however there are several theories given based on one can understand the physics behind the joining of the two metal sheets through the ultrasonic welding the major four phenomena responsible for joining the two sheets together in the ultrasonic welding are the mechanical interlocking melting of interface material diffusion bonding and atomic force across the nascent metal so let us try to understand one of these theory when two relatively flat surfaces are brought together only their peaks matches as you see in this diagram even though the surfaces are flat for you never the entire surface get in contact with the another surface due to the impurity only the peaks are in contact so here if you see this is the peak in contact here the peak in contact thus the physical contact area is less than the geometric area of the contact and the ultrasonic consolidation causes the physical area this physical area which is very less to approach the geometric area or to achieve the contact between the geometric area so for example this is the area you are assuming that is in contact assume a but in the beginning only a very small amount of area will be con in contact that will be only in the peaks and assume that that is small a now ultrasonic consolidation makes sure that this area got increased to the area which is the geometric area capital a the ultrasonic motion first cause the oxide to break up on the top surface this is also called as acoustic softening it allows direct contact of pure metal resulting in metallic bonding the bonds are in turn plastically deformed by shear vibrations resulting in heat which promotes diffusion and crystallization of the material between layer resulting in a true metallurgical bonding also it can be noted that the ultrasonic energy shifts the curve by reducing both the amount of heat and stress needed to reach the plastic state value this effect is also called as balaha effect or acoustic softening particularly due to the ultrasonic wave traveling into the part this phenomena occur in addition the process is added by the transfer of ultrasonic energy into the metal which effectively acts similar to localized heating thus reducing the stress needed for plasticity once this physical area came into contact the atom diffusion starts happening due to the elevated temperature there and the appropriate bonding is formed across the interface now let us discuss about the process parameter those are largely affecting the process first is the pressure this pressure is applied from the vertical on the sonotrode then the ultrasonic excitation which is approximately in the range of 20 kilohertz and the amplitude is approximately 5 to 30 microns then the surface condition after sonotrode damage because this when the sonotrode moves over the foil due to the knurling pattern on the sonotrode this top surface is get attached or mechanically got bonded with the sonotrode and that makes sure that there is no relative motion between the sonotrode and the plate or the sheet which we are joining and there will be only relative motion between the sheet which we are joining and the posited or previously made layer of course the another important parameter is this welding speed it decided by by which speed this sonotrode is rotating forward of course the stiffness of the build piece is another important parameter because that will define how much pressure we are able to apply 
because if the stiffness is less we cannot apply a very high pressure from the top other heat inputs like the frictional heat and the external heat are the other parameters so keeping these process parameters in mind let us try to understand their effect on the final process so the first is the travel speed the travel speed of the sonot rod determines the energy exposed per unit length of the weld track the amplitude of vibration is the another parameter higher the value of the amplitude of course higher will be the value of the energy transfer to the workpiece a sufficient amount of ultrasonic energy is required to plastically deform the interface and to fill the voids if the amount of energy input exceeds the critical value it will start producing the crack at the already plastically deformed and bonded interface so we have to be very careful on while deciding this amplitude typically its value varies from 5 micron to 40 micron usually a normal load is applied the compressive load usually applied to flatten the asperities and determines the magnitude of the limiting value of friction force and consequently the stress is at the interface because assume that if these are the peaks in the contact the pressure applied from the top will determine that what should be the stress at these locations and this stress will further define how or when this material will get plastically deformed at these locations so that the physical contact can improve to the geometric contact area if the normal load exceeds the critical value the excess plastic deformation may cause damage on the previously bonded surfaces at the interface so we have to be very careful while selecting the normal load as well the another important parameter is the temperature of the base plate external heat could serve to reduce the apparent stress for plasticity and hence the atomic diffusion and reduce the strain hardening due to the uh, plasticity which occur into the metals so usually the ultrasonic consolidation process uh, usually occur at elevated temperature of approximately 200 degree centigrade next is this texture on the sonot rod the sonot rod texture directly affects the amount of damage to the surface of the bonding strip excessive damage may lead to the large gap in the bonding interface because for example if this is my sonot rod and it is having some texture on it the same texture will be produced on the sheet also on which the sonot rod is moving and assume that if this texture is too deep then when the next layer will be coming on that the interface will look something like this and if this valleys are quite deep those are because of the knurling pattern on the sonot rod then it will be difficult to fill that voids it will deform due to the applied pressure but in the end itself when the interface bonding will be formed some voids will always remain here however we also understand that these patterns are important as if these patterns will not be there on the sonot rod there may be a slipping between the sonot rod and the foil already kept here so to avoid the relative motion between the sonot rod and the strip which we are going to join then we have to give them knurling pattern on that so that there will be a proper gripping and there won't be any relative motion between the sonot rod and strip so we need to appropriately define the texture which we are providing on the sonot rod the next important parameter is the electrical power draw it is the measurable quantity that may reflect the different conditions of sticking and slip at the interface one can easily see the sonot rod requiring more power to contract friction when it is sliding than micro sliding or even sticking the another parameter is stiffness of the machine itself this whole thing directly affects the amount of force which we are able to transmit to the bonding interface the other process parameters related to the material are highlighted then on this slide the first parameter is the surface topography 
द सर्फेस टोपोग्राफी अफेक्ट द इनिशियल कॉन्टेक्ट एरिया थ्रू द टचिंग ऑफ द एस्परिटीज एंड देर फॉर इंफ्लुएंस द फ्रिक्शनल एंड नॉर्मल स्ट्रेसिस एट द इंटरफेस नेक्स्ट इज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द सर्फेस कंटेमिनेशन एंड ऑक्साइड्स द सर्फेस कंटेमिनेशन प्रिवेंट्स मेटल टू मेटल बॉन्डिंग and they must be displaced in order to initiate the bonding itself hence there should not be any contamination or oxides on the surface those are going to be joined however we can never eliminate the oxides from the surface completely and we know that further these oxides are anyway going to break break by the ultrasonic vibration which we are providing on the metal surface then of course the stiffness of the substrate directly influence the resistive force produced by the friction at the bonding interface and that is further important for the strength of the bond which we are making next parameter is the hardness hardness directly influence the coefficient of friction between the two material empirically it has been shown to influence the amount of energy required to form a bond Ultrasonic consolidation is potentially known for its capability of handling the object at the low temperature. Because of that advantage, we can embed the different types of parts while building the process. Those are relatively can be handled only on the low temperature. So like for example as you are seeing here this is an example of reinforcing the fiber into the metal pieces so here as you see in this diagram the fibers are kept like this and these are the tiny fibers and then from the top the ultrasonic oscillation is given now as the contact area will be less at these locations initially the stress will be quite high at these locations and the material will get plastically deformed in these regions later on this physical contact will convert to geometric contact that is much larger which is from here to here and the energy and the as the material is getting plastically deformed in this location this material will come down and finally will go join with the bottom layers so small animation is shown here here you can see the stress is in red color and as the ultrasonic vibration is provided over a period of time the stresses are increasing in the entire region and finally and the two pieces are joined by the after getting the plastically deformed at the interface these are some of the examples here you can see the fiber is embedded between the two metal strips and if you supply the light from one end you can see the illuminating fibers on the another end making such type of object with the fiber embedded into the metal by any other process will be a very challenging task because here the temperature doesn't rise much the temperature is approximately up to 50% of the melting point and hence due to that there is no damage is caused to the fiber or the things which we are embedding into the part while making the object the another very good advantage of ultrasonic consolidation is its capability of joining the dissimilar materials as we have found in some literature that a variety of material can be joined together here you see in this diagram this axis shows some list of material like aluminum beryllium copper gallium uh, gold iron magnesium molybdenum nickel platinum platinum silicon and all and on the this axis also you are seeing the similar materials so in the literature we have found that already it has been explored that the aluminum alloys have been joined with all these materials and so on and if you take another example for example the iron alloys have already been explored with of course with iron iron joining and the iron molybdenum joining iron with platinum iron with platinum so similarly iron with silver and iron with tin tantalum titanium tungsten zirconium and all so this huge variety of the joining of the dissimilar materials capability of ultrasonic vibration 
और अल्ट्रासोनिक कंसोलिडेशन प्रोसेस मेक्स इट अ वेरी प्रोमिसिंग टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर एडिटिव मैनुफैक्चरिंग हियर यू कैन सी द कॉपर एंड एल्यूमिनियम ज्वाइंट टूगेदर एट डिफरेंट डिफरेंट लेयर्स नाउ लेट अस ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट हाउ मच एनर्जी इज रियली रिक्वायर्ड टू बी गिवन टू मेक द अल्ट्रासोनिक वेल्डिंग बिटवीन द टू स्ट्रिप्स लेट अस कंसिडर अ सेटअप फॉर अल्ट्रासोनिक कंसोलिडेशन प्रोसेस एज शोन इन दिस फिगर ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड we have here a base plate on which we are trying to join a strip which is shown here in the blue color to join this strip with the base plate a sonot rod is moving on top of this strip and moving along the y axis with a linear velocity of vt also as we have already discussed this sonot rod also vibrate in the transverse direction which is here along the x axis with the velocity function v there's a vertical force which is getting applied onto the top surface of the strip and that is along the z direction as it is shown here in this figure let us have a look at from the y axis side from this side towards the plane x z then the setup will look something like this here in this case you can see the velocity function v which is the transverse vibration of the sonot rod is shown the sonot rod moves back and forth like this along the x axis and a pressure is applied along the z direction which is downward here if we zoom particularly along this area which is consisted of the strip and the base plate to observe the different kind of forces acting on it we can zoom it further here as already mentioned the pressure p is getting applied from the sonot rod side to the strip as we already discussed there is a knurling operation performed on to the surface of this sonot rod therefore there is a high friction between the strip and the sonot rod which results in a force getting applied in the perpendicular direction to the force applied and that will be your friction force represented here by fs this force is coming between the sonot rod and the strip as a result the strip is also vibrating with a velocity function v later on if you look at from the bottom side from the anvil side the same pressure p will be applied in the perpendicular direction equal and opposite force as we are applying from the top and also there will be a friction between the anvil and the base plate due to that friction force that force direction is shown here that is the perpendicular to the p and it is represented here by fa that is the friction force between the base plate and the anvil if we look at this particular strip only and and draw its free body diagram it will look something like this here we have the force fs applied that is coming because of the friction between the sonot rod and the strip and a pressure p getting applied from the sonot rod as a result like i mentioned the strip will vibrate back and forth in along the x direction and that will be with the velocity function v also there will be a interfacial force acting between the strip and the base plate that is also coming because of a finite value of friction between the strip and the base plate and represented here by fi so this is the complete free body diagram of the strip in a similar fashion we can observe the free body diagram of the base plate as well on the base plate there will be a p pressure applied from the perpendicular side and a p pressure getting applied from the bottom side in the same and opposite direction there will be a interfacial force which is coming between the strip and the base and there will be a friction force again coming between the 
anvil and the base. Now let us assume that the sonotrode which is available on the top of this strip is vibrating along the x-axis and the motion of this sonotrode which is moving back and forth is given by dt equals to d naught sin 2 pi ft. So we are assuming here a simple harmonic motion of the sonotrode. As a result, we can easily obtain the velocity function and acceleration by differentiating this equation. In this equation, we have a variable called d naught that is called amplitude. It says how far the sonotrode will go from its central axis during the motion. Its typical value in ultrasonic consolidation is about 5 to 40 micron. Then another parameter here is the frequency. The typical frequency of the sonotrode in ultrasonic consolidation is about 20 kilohertz. Now we can easily find out the velocity function that will be equals to 2 pi f d naught cos 2 pi f t that is just obtained by differentiating this equation. And similarly, after differentiating the velocity function, we can obtain the acceleration function of time that is equals to minus 4 pi square f square d naught sine 2 pi f t. So now we know the acceleration of the sonotrode. As the sonotrode is vibrating back and forth, a finite amount of this strip will be also in contact of it and that particular mass of that strip will also vibrate with the same function. Theoretically, it looks like there will be a point contact between the cylinder and the plate but due to the finite value of the elasticity, there will be a partial deform deformation at this point and there will be a finite value of this length and that length will be called here as LC. Once we know the acceleration, now try to write the equation of motion of the top surface by applying the Newton's second law. It says that the forces acting on this particular strip are Fs and Fi and as a result there is acceleration also into this strip which is equals to m into a. Hence, I am writing this equation of motion and it is coming to be Fst plus Fit equals to m into at. This Fs also is a function of t. What is Fs? Fs is this force which is nothing but the friction force between the sonotrode and the strip. We can easily obtain it. We know how much pressure we are applying that is p and we also know the friction coefficient value between the sonotrode and the strip and as a result fs will be equals to mu into p. It can be noted that to increase this value of mu so that there won't be much slip between the sonotrode and the strip, we usually perform a knurling operation onto the peripheral surface of the sonotrode and hence this value of mu is quite high. Also, it can be noted that this Fs is a function of time. Why so? Because the sonotrode is moving back and forth like this. So when the sonotrode is going in this direction, that time Fs will be in opposite direction. And when the sonotrode will go in this direction, as a result, the Fs will be in opposite direction. So we can say that the direction of this force is opposite, opposite to the velocity of the sonotrode. So in this function, we in this equation, we know the Fs. Now Fit is, of, is something which we want to calculate, the interfacial force is of our interest right now. The mass of the strip which is actually moving or basically in contact with the sonotrode that can be easily obtained if we consider 
like I already mentioned, a finite value of the contact length that is LC and multiply it with the width of the strip that is in this direction and the thickness of the strip that is this one. Then we can have the volume of this particular zone. And that volume, if I multiply it with the density of this strip, then what we'll have, we'll have the mass of the strip. So this much mass of the strip moving with an acceleration A. Hence, the force is M into AT. So M is known to us. A is also known to us. This is given by this function. This is the input. Basically, this is of course known to us. We can easily obtain the value of Fi. Now, let us try to observe how do we obtain the value of LC that is the contact length between two material that is the strip and the sonotrope. So material 1 and 2 assuming that this is material 1 and this is material 2 they are in contact. We can easily obtain the LC it will be equals to 2 root over P is the pressure as the radius of the cylinder 2 pi and bracket 2 k1 plus 1 1 plus v1 divided by e1 plus 2 k2 plus 1 1 plus nu2 divided by e2. We know that this nu1 and nu2 are the Poisson's ratio for two different material and e1 and e2 are the elasticity for material 1 and material 2. And k is a constant which is typically given like this. So k will be equals to 3 minus 4 nu. If we want to find out k1 then this will be k1 equals to 3 minus 4 nu1. And if you want to calculate for material 2, k2 will be equals to 3 minus 4 nu2. So once we know that, we completely know the value of LC. Hence I can write now interfacial force F equals to LCWTS rho that is the mass of the strip which is in contact with the sonotroid multiplied with AT minus now we have mu p that is our force Fs but we need to obtain its direction also. So how can we obtain? We already mentioned that the direction of Fs will be in the opposite direction of Vt. So we know that Vt, this is the velocity. If I divide it by the magnitude of Vt, then what will remain? Only the direction of Vt, of course. And the free Fs will be in opposite direction of the direction of Vt. Hence, I will write minus also here. So that is why this minus Vt divided by the mode of Vt shows the direction opposite to Vt. And as a result, we can easily obtain now the interfacial shear force. And once the interfacial shear force is known to us, we can find out the energy input in each cycle. So for example, my sonotroid is moving back and forth like this. It is going here and then coming back. In this entire period, which is called as the time period, how much energy is required? We can easily find out. So the interfacial force between the strip and the base is Fi. So this much force is required and we are moving with the velocity. The relative velocity between the strip and the base is V, correct? So we know that the energy is nothing but integration of F into V for the time period given that is Ft. So that is what written here. So energy input or the energy required in each cycle of the sonotron motion will be equals to integration 0 to t. t is the time period or the time required from uh, for the for the harmonic motion of the for each cycle of the harmonic motion of the sonotron and then integration fit into vt dt. We know everything. We know Ft. It is written here. And we also know Vt. Hence, we can easily find out the E0. That is nothing but our energy input in each cycle. A better representation of LC is given here. 
So as you see that a small portion of the cylinder which is in contact with the strip will get flattened and as it will get flattened the length will be having some finite value but not a point and that is what we are obtaining through this formula. Also, it can be noted from particularly this diagram that each point on the strip which is when coming under the sonotrode remains under the sonotrode for some period of time. Like for example, this particular point which I am calling it as point number 1. It will come under the sonotrode and as the sonotrode is moving with a finite velocity Vt along the y direction this point will remain under the sonotrode itself for some time. So that is called basically the dwelling time. This time can be calculated by dwelling time equals to the length of contact divided by Vt. If for example this length is 0, of course that in that case only the point will come under the sonotrode once. Hence, there won't be any dwelling time, means the sonotrode will not be stationary or will not remain at a particular point for a period. But it will be just in, available at a point instantaneously only. But as there is a finite value of this length LC due to the deformation of the sonotrode, then when the sonotrode is moving, this will remain under this until this sonotrode passes over it. And that is given by Td equals to the length and the velocity Vt. So, Lc divided by Vt. So, during that time, this particular time, the sonotrode is also vibrating, right? It is continuously vibrating along the perpendicular direction, along the x direction, which is shown here. And we just calculated how much energy the sonotrode can transfer in each cycle. So, for example, it is going there and coming back. That is called one cycle. So, when the sonotrode is moving over a particular point, it may be subjected to multiple cycles. And those number, that how many numbers of cycle each point will go through can be calculated by n equals to Td, that is the dwell time divided by the time period for each cycle. So for example, if the value of Tt is 2 second and the sonotrode is vibrating and completing its each cycle in 0.5 second, then of course 4 cycles will be subjected to each and every point on the strip. And we have just calculated the energy available in each cycle. And if I multiply it with uh, this uh, energy required or available in each cycle with the number of cycle, then I will be having total energy which I am going to supply to each point of the strip. Of course, you can see if the time period will reduce, that means I am increasing my frequency, we know that, right? In that case, I am moving it very fast back and forth. That means each point will go through higher number of energy cycles. Also, if I go slow, for example, I am moving very slowly. In that case also, my dwell time will increase. Hence, the number of cycles each point going through will increase and the, hence the total energy going into each point of the strip will increase. So this is how we can calculate the total energy we are providing in ultrasonic consolidation. That is how we can easily find out the energy which we are giving to the strip. And if you know the energy required for the interfacial bonding also, you can easily find out whether the bonding is going to happen or not. So this is the fundamental or the process modeling for the ultrasonic consolidation process. So now let me summarize the advantage, however I have already explained whenever it was required but in this slide all the advantages associated with ultrasonic consolidation are summarized. 
Ultrasonic consolidation allows the embedment of temperature and pressure sensitive objects into the metal matrix example silicon carbide fibers, shape memory alloy fibers, optical fibers, fiber brack grading, electronic sensors etc. This is permitted due to the low temperature and high plastic flow of the material matrix that is encountered during ultrasonic consolidation and particularly due to the acoustic softing. There is no atmospheric control with ultrasonic consolidation due to the solid state room temperature nature of the material processing. Meaning to say, in other additive manufacturing processes, you have, might have seen either the entire chamber is purged with organ or the all the gases are removed from there so that the oxidation cannot occur. But here as the process is happening at the room temperature due to the solid bonding, no atmospheric control is required. Ultrasonic control doesn't have no safety hazards associated with the formation of liquid metal, metal fumes, powder handling, dust or any other molten material handling issues like in other additive manufacturing processes. It is very very clean process. Due to the absence of liquid to solid transformation, ultrasonic consolidation also minimizes the residual stresses. Of course, in this case, there will be less delta T. And of course, if the residual stresses are less, the distortion in the final part produced by the ultrasonic consolidation will be less. Ultrasonic consolidation deposition rates are higher than for many layer manufacturing process due to far larger deposition spot that is around 25.4 mm width of the foil itself and lack of any lengthy post processing involved in the process such as in other laminated sheet manufacturing processes we have seen such as decubing and all there are no such post processing are required. What is happening in the machine itself and those are in situ and automatic. Hence you need not to do any further processing with the parts produced by ultrasonic consolidation. UC can be used to bond material that are metallurgically incompatible in the fusion bonding process. For example, aluminum, titanium, copper, nickel, stainless steel and you have seen a huge list where the different dissimilar materials can be joined by the process. And you can take this advantage and this is the most appropriate LED manufacturing process for joining the dissimilar materials. Ultrasonic consolidation is energy efficient, consume as little as 5% of energy required for more conventional welding processes. So this was about the ultrasonic consolidation. Now let us discuss quickly about the laminated manufacturing based on fasteners. In this process, we first create drawings of the part, we give the data input, then we cut the metal sheets. How do we cut the metal sheets? So for example, you have a metal sheet, cut inside that, take the inside part also and keep this bottom part also. Fine. So this top part which, which you carve out, that part will be then further kept on the another sheet and this cavity part will be kept separately. You keep on doing it. As a result, we will be able to produce the two links. While the part which is created by stacking the layers, by stacking the layers where the cavity was will be called as die and stacking of the layers on which the part which was removed from the cavity will be called as punch. Now this thing can be used for producing the forming operation. You have, you know that. So in this case, if you keep another sheet here and punch this into this die, this sheet will take the shape of this cavity. It is very similar like you have seen the transformers at home. These transformers are made by laminars, right? Here also it is the same concept. The only thing is how these sheets are joined together. It is very similar like in transformer. They are joined just by the fasteners. And these fasteners are nothing but your screw and bolt. So you just join these sheets together by the screw and bolts and use it for producing the parts. This method of LED manufacturing or laminated manufacturing is not very popular, but it's quite innovative to produce the punch and dies in a quick manner. So let us have a look at a DIY project for utilizing the laminated or the sheet lamination based LED manufacturing process to manufacturing a tool. So we shall use the approach cut then paste here. So this is a sheet what you are seeing we are going to cut the appropriate
contour out of this sheet and one part of the sheet will be corresponding to the punch and one part of the sheet will be corresponding to the die. Here in this case we are considering the punch to be a cylindrical object and the die to be a cylindrical cavity. These are the first layers corresponding to punch and the die. Now the same method will be applied for each and every layer and we will first cut all the sheets. As I have already mentioned we are going to use the technique of cut then paste approach. Hence we are first removing and making the corresponding layers for each and every layer. Then after that these layers are joined together by using an appropriate adhesive. As you have already seen different methods can be used to join these sheets together. Here we are using a conventional pressure based adhesive method. After joining approximately 300 layers our die and punch is ready. Now we can use some foils to form to obtain the shape of the die. As you can see here the punch is pressed against the die where a aluminium foil is kept and when the punch presses against it it gives the shape to the aluminium foil in the desired form. This type of tool can extend the analogy for fabricating the real life products corresponding to the forming object. The analogy which you are seeing here can be further extended to form the objects of real life those are actually made by forming operation. So with this I will stop here. Thank you very much.